Oh, right. It's just my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite it, is, it, it is me, too. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're sitting with uh, Kimberly. Or you want to go with Kim? Kim or Kimberly? Kimberly, yeah. Kimberly is the always, right? That's mm-hmm. always the go-to. In my, yeah, recently, okay. I guess. I've been introducing myself as Kimberly instead of Kim. Good, good. That was kind of change gears for me. Getting minute. older. Yeah. We were talking <laughs> and it's about my given older. name. So, um... <laughs> When we first met, you were sincerely candles, which mm-hmm. you still are. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, just I guess, tell us, this is Kimberly from yeah yeah yeah. Okay. X Y Z. Well, I usually introduce myself as Kimberly the candle maker from Ashboro. Everywhere I go, that's how I introduce myself, and then they're like, "Well, where's Ashboro?" And they're like, "Oh, Asheville." Yeah. Like, no, no, Ashboro. Right. And even though I'm like doing different things now, I still introduce myself as the candle maker. Um, The candle business is always there for me. Like it's always going to be there for me. It's been there for me for a long time. And I think what it's cool about it is people don't forget. And when you're like, oh, you're a candle maker, and then they remember me. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Kim the candle maker. So yeah. Oh, that's how Um, I initially remember you from. Joel, like I said, he he gave me a couple of these and told me to look you up and start networking mm. with you. And I think that's kind of what we did. Um, so the candles here she made and put in the Four Saints. Yeah, those little they smell nice. Yeah, it's yeah, a little mixture. You. Yeah, they do. Now, is this something taboo to do? <clears throat> like two at the same time, two different scents. Um, this particular project was something that Joel Mikowski with Four Saints Brewing Company reached out and he was like, look, I have these, um, these shot glasses that we're not going to do anything with. I don't know what to do with them. So can you fill them with candles? Can you repurpose them, reuse them? Um, it's an, actually an anniversary shot glass for when Randolph County got approved for alcohol by the drink. And so he didn't want to like throw them away or just like sell them plain. So we made them into candles. And I think if I remember correctly, it's been a while back, but I think there were four different scents that he wanted me to make. And um, it was a pomegranate cider and cedar and saffron. And I think a magnolia was one of them. I don't remember the fourth, but that was the first project that I did with them. Nice. Yeah. So with me burning two different scents at the same time, is that something you should or shouldn't do? Like, is that like against, like, etiquette for candles? I mean, typically, I think that people usually stick to one scent per room. Okay. You know? breaking some But it's okay. Should I I blow one out and save it for later? It's not going to bother me as long as it doesn't bother anybody else. I'm bothered. I'm bothered. bothered. Blow whichever one out, man. The pomegranate cider, the... (laughs) The purplish one is really great for this time of the year. We should totally go with that one. Yeah. There we go. Oh. That's a good candle. That's a good candle. That's that, a good candle. <laughs> <laughs> that wick. It's a trick, it's a trick candle. <laughs> Purple is my favorite color anyway, so we'll keep that uh, going. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, that's a good story. We all, like, we've all come together uh, since the pandemic or, you know, the lockdown. I'm trying to get away from pandemic and COVID because that's still around. But since the lockdown era yeah. is when we, uh, like, I started really getting into the, the things with with you. That's when I met you. Yeah. Um, and I think that's when, you know, Joe was really taking a big initiative towards, you know, trying to pull the community together. Community, more. yeah. And uh, which was yeah. a beautiful thing. So uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm so grateful that, that he reached out to do that because it got more eyes on my business. Um, and truthfully, it was the first, like, brewing company that I worked with. And since then, I've worked with, like, two or three others. So I think it kind of opened that door for me of doing wholesale orders for brewing companies. So I just... I. I couldn't express my gratitude enough for him including me in his business and um, I'm actually still working on a project for them so making a beer scented candle oh. trying to nice. but I'm running into a problem with that is that the oils that I'm finding have phthalates in them which is a big no-no for my company because I keep everything all the oil I'm a conscious consumer so I keep all the oils um, clean and free 
of phthalates and nitro musks and a whole list of things really that so you stick to that that's good yeah and so it's uh i'm having trouble finding good supplies to do this but i don't want to don't want to give up right. i might have to mix something myself and mm -hmm. just kind of be creative with it so <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to the outcome of that. You're, yeah. de you're determined. You're going to make it work. Yeah, and so this this time he's filling the Pilsner glasses. Okay. Wow. The tall Pilsners, yeah. so yeah. we're like big 16-ounce candles. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, That'll be nice. We have a little bit of following going on over there at the brewing company with uh, Sincerely Candles, so it's custom scents for him, for them. Awesome. Beer-scented candles. People going to be drinking the wax. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Don't get them mixed up. Yeah, Don't. yeah, really. Yeah. 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 Uh, I know some people want to uh, keep that away from them. Depends on how many. Yeah. You know, that would be tough. That would be tough. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to, to Marshall and Shad before you got here about, like, since uh, since the babies got here, I've kind of, and we've been working on this for almost two months, and so I've been kind of removed from Ashboro a little bit more than I'm used to. So I really mm. don't know what's going on out there, you know. As I see, you mm. know, I see your emails with uh, certain events and your your, mm. your stuff on the internet, but I I haven't really been out in Asheboro. Yeah. Except I picked up my artwork at Illumina right after mine was born, and uh, I feel disconnected um, at this point, even though it's only been four months. It just feels like this vast disconnect. Yeah. Uh, I didn't go to Christmas on Sunset. I don't know if you went to that or. We went up to it, um, but my, my little was actually with his dad that night who would have really enjoyed the program, and my 15-year-old, um, <laughs> he's 15, <laughs> <laughs> we went and we were like, oh, well, let's go, and there was so many people, he was just like, mom, I don't want to deal with this right now, so mm. it's like, oh, okay, yeah. and we were actually running an errand and coming, th you know, we had ended up going around town, but... We went kind of later, he and I did, and walked through town and enjoyed the Christmas lights. Because that's kind of what my son is into. Um, but I heard that they continued the marshmallow roasting tradition. Okay. So I'm really curious if anybody out there in Ashboro Land has photos of that, because that would be amazing. Um, my friend Jackie has a photo of the roasting marshmallows at Christmas on Sunset from seven years ago. Wow. So that would be cool to see if if they were still doing that and if um, if anyone has photos of that because that that was probably awesome. Yeah, but you hear that? sorry I missed photos, it. Photos, if you if you're watching this, <laughs> we need photos of the marshmallows. They're roast. probably out there in social media later. But yeah, I'm trying to fake it neither. I'm yeah. trying to fake it. No Photoshop. No you, Photoshop. You, you, camp, you campsite marshmallows. You're trying to get the real thing. Uh, yeah, well that, that's something I miss. I, uh, the parade, we missed that too. We missed, uh, I usually film for the play that they do, and uh, we missed mm -hmm. that. So I just, I feel really disconnected with it. So, you know, to, to talk to you for a little bit about what's kind of going on. Is, yeah, uh, well, I mean, I think that's normal with new parenthood is to kind of drop into your family, and, and that's the most important thing, so you can you know, move from a place of, of wholeness when you are out here doing the amazing stuff with your community like you're doing right now, you know. Um, we, let's see what we have participated in. We went to the Sunset Theater when they did The Grinch. Oh, I saw photos. Yeah, the boys and I did that, and that was amazing. I'll have to share with you the little thing that they did, like... The, the actor who played the Grinch was so interactive with the audience and doing improvs that it was hilarious. <laughs> and they ended up like doing this little toss of a stuffed animal onto the balcony and the guy was like holding the thing and like it was funny and I and I was sitting at just the right seat in the balcony where I got like that's awesome. A good angle of what was going on, so <laughs> I'll have to send that to you so you yeah. can enjoy that little clip. But please, do we we'll even put it, it in this? Yeah, and, yeah, it was a lot of fun. My kids liked that. Even the big kid liked that. Right. It's the Grinch, you know. That's something that we've grown to love as people. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's something great. And I, they 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 made a a horror movie from the Grinch. It's called The Mean One. Really? It's re it's it's really low budget. Yeah. But it keeps it keeps some of the the fun in, into it. Okay. It's not a total, you know, total bomb, but it's 
Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, my, my three-year-old niece, we're talking about Christmas now, and she talks about the Grinch more than she talks about Santa Claus. She's like, yeah, the Grinch. <laughs> like, the Grinch, yeah. yeah. He's mean. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good, the Grinch, man. So uh, we saw some of the videos, like some people had put it on TikTok, or the reels. The reels are a big thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they were putting the reels, and he was rolling around on the ground. Did, did they have a Max, or did they just have like a stuffed mm-hmm. animal Max? Or a real no, dog? they had a human Max. That oh, a human, human Max. Max. Okay. A human Max. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was the one that caught the stuffed animal on the balcony. Okay. He was good. He was really good. That's cool. It was the three of them. It was three people doing this whole program, and my son was impressed about how well three people ran that ran that story nice. and ran that audience. Nice. It was it was fun, and I think it was promoted by the library, right? Sponsored by the library. Right. Yeah, which I'm I'm in love with what they're doing, what the library's been doing. Mm-hmm. The library's really stepped up to what we've seen in the last two mm-hmm. or three years, like just all kinds of different events. They did the Chinese New Year yeah. um, events, so we took, you know, Ty, I'm going to see those, which is, it's, it's a big thing. Um, I would be curious to um, see, you know, they, they had the drag show at the Four Saints. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious to see if they could do the reading, you know, a lot of drag queens come to read to the kids. That would be something that would be kind of cool here. Yeah. Um, be interested in that, because I think that they're, you know, the people that are running the show there are pretty open minded for yeah. things like that. Yeah, so, I know they um, have a lot of activities going on for the kids and for the homeschool community as well. Because right. uh, we're into the homeschool community and we get an email every month from the library with um, free offerings for events going on right. for homeschoolers. Okay. Um, That's something so we, we still don't know what we're going to do yet. We yeah. got to we gotta, we gotta decide when the in the spring. Grow up a little kid, do, actually, the four year old, I mean, they're doing stuff for them. Yeah. He yeah. goes over there and they do the, you know, the reading. Um, mm-hmm. And then she, Megan was going to take Mylon over for lap reading. I guess they do it for zero to three mm-hmm. or zero to two years old um, on Tuesdays, I think, Tuesday mornings. Sweet. And, yeah, look into that whenever yeah, you, well. you have the little one because um, it's, it's, a, it's a big. It's a big uh, asset of the community. We it's always been there. big. I remember when we were on Elm Street, we could call a number, and the lady, w- it was a pre recorded, she read the whole story. Really? You, know, you could call, and the lady still worked there for the longest time. Um, oh, was, I remember that. Yeah. You could the just call, call the read a story or call a story or yeah. something. Yeah. It. It was, do they was, still do that? I don't know. I don't either. We have to look into it. It was a number, and like there was, I, I don't ever remember it being busy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So like, mm-hmm. th- multiple kids could call in, and you could listen to them. It was the most soothing voice, mm. and you would see the woman out at the fall festival, and be like, "That's her. Yeah, that's that chick. <laughs> that's that chick." <laughs> and it would be like, I that's remember. That's so sweet. Yeah, um, and that, that's that's how I always remember the library and how you know they're, they're motivating the community to do better. They have. You know, hot spots for people that don't have internet. You know, mm-hmm. you can check yeah. those out there. Um, you know, you can pe- people can sit on that bench out there and get their really uh, the internet. Um, it's just it's a, it's a great asset. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's something that we had Michael Gonzalez in here a couple weeks ago from mm-hmm. the, Acti- oh, yeah. the Actors on Gaming and um they're homeschooler. Yeah, Korean. yeah, mm-hmm. and we were kind of talking about different things for the youth in the in the area. And, that's something we failed to, to bring up yeah. is, the, is the library. The library, some the people call library. it. Library. Library. <laughs> library. That's where we Shannon, went when I was a kid. You know about the library. That's how we said we it. We went to the library. Southwest Randolph mm-hmm. Middle School. It was called the library. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right next to the chimney on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so that brings me to another question. I, I, I don't know uh, a whole lot about your background. Are you from Asheboro? Um, um, so I was born in New York, in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, my family moved here when I was eight. And you know what? This is my 30, this, this is the 30th year that I've been here. So we moved here in 1992. Okay. Um, we in New York, we had a good life going for us. My mother worked for IBM and like we had, you know, all the fine things and they did a big downsizing in the early 90s and she lost her job. Uh, was laid off, but she was like, 
she was like older in the company and one of the ones that they just they just cut um so we ended up selling everything that we had in new york and coming south because our money went further down here right and ashboro she went like oh this is the middle of the state let's just move here Mm -hmm. because it was the middle of the state no it's not (laughs) <laughs> it's the bullseye. The bullseye. So that's the reason that my family is here. And it's like, you know, as an eight year old, it was tough for I me. Can imagine. I, yeah. I'll yeah. be really transparent with you guys. It was a traumatizing experience. What was it? I eight, eight in the ni- eight years old in the early nineties. Mm, yeah. yeah. In addition to that, but also the financial transition that my family was going through. Mm. Um, and then coming to a brand new culture. Like, this is a different culture here. Yeah. Like, it's not, you know, let's move to Raleigh or whatever. <laughs> like, this is north to south. Yeah. And I was, I think, at that development stage in my life to where it's just, like, not good for me. Yeah. I bet it was it extremely was tough. confusing. It was very confusing. Was it, was it difficult, like, making friends? As a it was challenging to make friends. Yeah. I was the big-haired girl with a weird accent that mm-hmm. talked funny mm-hmm. and I just always felt like I was just outside of the clique right. and so but I mean as I got older I kind of found my people you know yeah. um, but I think that part of that experience because of my personal experience I hated the community and I think that I was hating on Ashboro just because of what I was going through like you know but at the same time, it's like, now that I look at it, and I'm a mom of two kids, it's like, I like it here now. I see why mom chose it, hmm. you know? Do you so, ever get those flashbacks of, like, that that scared hate for this place? Does that come creep in at all? Well, it did for a while. I think it was, so I just bought property, like, I just bought property, I just committed <laughs> to this mm. county, to this city. Recently or um, a couple years ago? A year and a half ago. Okay. okay. Where, where you had the event that we went and to? Like? Yeah. Okay. And so I think re- really recently, like in the past like a couple of years, like maybe in the pandemic, is when I just started like really embracing the community and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to bloom where I was planted. Mm. You know? That's a great idea. Like a great I, idea. I was put a here for a reason. And it's, so it's kind of like this self-imposed thing that I'm doing like oh okay well I'm going to <coughs> face this and I'm going to grow here who you else know? is going to do can, it if you don't do it I it's can true. leave if I want I mean I can go wherever but there's something that keeps me here and I think it's just that personal development of I want to to bloom where I'm planted I mean I don't know what else to say besides that see so. me and you get 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 along in that aspect too because we're in the same boat. I just, mm-hmm. I go back and forth so much. And I haven't, yeah, I've embraced it. And now I'm back on the other side where I'm like, what, mm-hmm. what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Um, and just to see, seeing you talking to you about this is, is helpful for me as well as anybody else who might be listening and watching. Because like, where you're planted, that's where you're going to bloom. Like you said, mm-hmm. you know, this is where you're going to flourish. Um, I really, have, I'm having a hard time at this point in Asheboro myself. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's self-imposed both ways. It's self-imposed that I'm having a hard time. It can be self-imposed that I'm doing well. Mm-hmm. So um, you've, you've been an inspiration since I've seen, seen you because I know you, I didn't know you were from New York, but I knew that there was, um, you had, your background had to be a little different. Mm-hmm to see this differently, see Ashboro differently, and to keep maneuvering how you how you maneuver. Because, um, you know, uh, my family's from Pennsylvania, New York. I was the first Southern boy born here. So I was very confused oh, okay. growing up. I didn't know, mm-hmm. like, uh, their, their, their background and what they were doing was very different than mm-hmm. what I was going to school seeing. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, that's been traumatic for me, and it still is. It still comes back, mm-hmm. especially when... Uh, you know, we had the, the the lockdown, the marches going on, the civil protests, things like that. Just seeing all that, just having everything flash back in my mind of, you know, go back, you damn Yankees. Mm-hmm. You know, that's probably what you you heard to your parents 
you know, yeah. for kids at school. Yeah. You know, those things, they don't go anywhere. They're mm -hmm. still here. You know, you can mm -hmm. still see them when we go out to Fort Saints or to the Flying Pig. I know. So how do you, besides yourself in the position of saying that I'm going to do this, how do you get over that? Because I need to know any kind of tactics. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully I didn't like stir do the I, pot, you know. Do I, no, it's okay. I like it. I dig yeah. that. You know what? I get deep and I'm cool with yeah. that. You know, I just got to feel into this space for a minute because it's that thing. It's like, how real do you want me to get on this program? This is the this is the defining but this is the pivotal <laughs> yeah. with you. We've got the um, we've got the, the the program director of the Pride Festival in Greensboro next. So this yeah. is our definitive, you know, how yeah. we're going to pivot for the rest of our podcast. This yeah. is this I did this intentionally for you and, and mm -hmm. her to be in the same night, so yeah. we can we can get into see the, the meat and potatoes. We can get deep. Yeah, yeah. and you know we can decide later on if we want to. You know, keep the deepness, or we want to <laughs> yeah. you know, shallow reserve right. for a little bit because yeah. you know the things that I said and did during the, during the lockdown have eliminated me from possibilities of yeah. doing certain things. I almost got taken off the board of the Chamber of Commerce because of things that I said during the pandemic. So I understand that getting deep in this community may be like Kanye getting deep yeah. to the to the world. It's going to be. You know, people, they're, they're all reper repercussions for this. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. like, we can, we can say it and we can analyze it and figure it out. You know, I'm, I'm fine with as much as you can get because <laughs> this is what, uh, this is Asheboro Undecided is this podcast. It is a podcast yeah. for a city that doesn't quite know itself yet. We still don't yeah. know it. Well, I can speak from experience. And that's all that I can, that I can come from right. is where I, where, where I've been, yes. you know? And I think that where I have been is obviously a transplant from the north. And you can't take away what you see. Like, okay, up there, I have a blended family. I mean, racially blended family. Right. You know what I mean? And that's more common and it's more normal there. Um, and so I have experienced that questioning, especially as a young child, of where where is this mindset coming from with the segmentation and with like the uh, a lot of the stereotypes and maybe even going into prejudice I don't use the R word loosely yeah. I believe that people use that loosely way too loosely but there I do see a lot of prejudice and experience that as a child in this community um, and even you know into my adult year even now and I think that like you know, I, I just wanted to love it here because it's this safe place where you have you have those conservative values in place to where it's not like the streets of Charlotte. Right. Okay. Like Sounds I don't like have Charlotte. to worry about my son walking down the street and seeing somebody come out of the strip club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there's that's like the benefit. Of, I think that like as a homeschool mom and as someone that wants to to raise my children and, and purify that innocence as much as possible like keep that innocence as much as possible it, that's part of what's kept me here however what comes with that is a lot of conservative values a lot of and 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 l let me just say when I say conservative I'm not talking fucking politics right okay because I don't even really get into politics. Uh, yeah. I don't. But I will say, when I say conservative, I mean of, like, values. Of the old way. Of what grandma has taught us. Of what, what has been passed down from our families. Traditional. Traditional. It might be a better word for that. So, it's like those traditional values um, are, are boxy. Here. Should you even call them values at this point? Our boxy. Yeah. Well, it's their it's about it's their values. It's it's, it's their belief, their, yeah. and I say they because I don't consider myself. I, hmm, I am here, and I am a member of this community, and I am them. Right. And this is where my peace comes from, Ty. Yeah. Is planting yourself in it. Because when you're face to face, when you're having these deep conversations, when you're moving people, you're doing something. True. You're making a change. True. And it takes that yucky stuff that, 
you know, you got to stir the pot in order to yeah. in order to release the stuff that no longer serves. And a lot of what's going on, um, I guess, no longer serves, really. It's just still kind of lingering. And, you know, back to my experience. So that's sort of the deep part of, like, my perspective with, you know, um, coming into a new culture in this community. When I can now take it to when I was getting older and I'm a business owner. Okay. And this is where I was sitting where you were not that long ago as a business owner, feeling like doors were being closed in my face and wanting to leave. Mm -hmm. Wanting to leave. You know, I started my company and I started my first business at 17. In 2002, I rented the, the, the house over there um, beside the psychic lady on 64, mm -hmm. the White House. And I'm 17, yeah, first yeah. store out of my mom's house, first rental out of my mom's house, and it's going to be a store, right? Um, well, I let that fizzle away because of some because of my relationship. I put someone else's dream before my own, but that's a whole nother story and a whole nother podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but back to the Ashboro thing, you know, keeping it on focus there, it's like, um, you know, I was a 17 year old starting a business and point being is I have a lot of gumption and I always have, like, I'll go get it you know, go get it. And, um, you know, my life went like this, like little spiral around. And then 2010, I opened a shop downtown and it was amazing. It was like, um, sincerely eclectic gallery. I had, are you, a uh, sincerely eclectic gallery. I had 86 people, 86 artists that I ended up consigning in this space. Wow. And I just wanted a place to sell my candles. That was my motive. But I, I had so much space to fill. So I just started taking on consignment. And it was amazing. It was beautiful. And you I said ran 86? 86 consigners. Wow. That's awesome. That's well, a huge you know, endeavor. That's massive. It was. But it was all I was doing at the time. Like, it was my life. Yeah. I, and, I mean, just to be honest I was living in that store mm. <laughs> I was there all the time yeah. and it was my dream and it was a lot of work but you know I had that energy like I wanted to put it into it and I, I have uh, a couple of photos I actually had um, I have a couple of photos I'll share with you but I lost a lot of the photos in the little digital um, SD card I just lost it mm. but anyway um they're all up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, bars. you know, that store ended up, um, I was renting from Schwartz. Oh. And you say, well, you can after, say more, but don't, you don't have to say <laughs> After a year and a half <laughs> being no there, and so people that may be listening to this that may or may not know Jeff Schwartz, he's was, he passed now, but he was sort of infamous for being, um really hard on people um just to say it really nicely yeah. but anyway still so he ended up fucking people over. double my rent <laughs> yeah so he ended up doubling my rent after a year and a half and mm. i had and i couldn't afford it at that time so i ended up um liquidating the store i had to return 86 people's things mm. and pack and and get out in 30 days it was crazy um but anyway, you know, I'm getting kind of like I know we only have a short amount of time. This no, you're so good. so so what I the what I want to say though is that we had that shop, then we ended up having, um, let's see, and that is where my shop is where Cardinal Royce Tattoo Gallery is now. That's where my store was. Okay. And then I ended up what renting. What time period was that? Um, it was 2010. Okay. 2010 to 2011 and a half. Okay. <laughs> That's when I was living in China, so oh, okay. I didn't have much. Yeah. Was the opera house there yet, or beside you, or was that, that they had begun to renovate okay. the okay. opera house towards the end of um, my tenancy there? Yeah. Okay. So, 
Um, and then we rented another building. So, okay, to sum it up, me and my mom and my son and my family have single-handedly, like, painted, dressed, painted, opened, dressed, and closed mm. five stores downtown Asheboro. Wow, wow. We were at 111 North Street okay. with the um, candle shop, and then across the street we had a candy shop there for a little while, and then we were Timeless Treasures, and then we were Sunset Sandwich Shop. That is all wow. us. I okay. No idea I, remember, <laughs> I remember that spot. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you telling my wife about the sandwich shop. Yeah. Um, and so it was one of those things that we were in and out, in and out, in and out. And all those are Schwartz? Are any of those Schwartz there? Um, yeah. Well, Some the Schwartz, Stranger, Schwartz, Stranger, and then... The Pride? Is he on any of that? No, not now. I mean, not then. Not this right. has been a while. Right, okay. Yeah. So, you know, just coming from a place of experience with having businesses downtown, um, and we would try to get involved in the community, um, we had these ideas of, like, doing things and, like, wanting to, like, you know, allow for businesses, allow for shops to, like, collaborate. And, and I don't know, we would, like, pitch things and we would show up to the to the meetings, the downtown committee meetings, and I felt like, boom, yeah. that we were getting a door closed in our face. And so I got really down on having business in this community, having a front door in this community for someone to walk through to support my business because of it takes so long to get movement. And me, um, maybe it's my impatience, I'm not saying that it's not, but I'm like, duh, 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 I want to do it. Like, if I'm going to do something, I'm yeah. going to do it, you know? And so I felt like it was just like, oh, okay, well, let's make a decision to get Christmas lights changed six months later. Mm, yeah. Or I'm like, okay, well, maybe that's in every community, but I don't know. Just from my experience, I felt like it was just slow moving, slow going, not innovative. It was lacking innovation when I was a member of the downtown community. And I guess I still am a member because I'm supporting the businesses that are down there with my dollars, and I, my products are sold in some of those stores. But in terms of like having a brick and mortar space, my where I am, I would go to another community the next time I rent a shop. Right. And maybe things are better now. I don't know. I can visually see that things, I feel like, are improving. You are watching or listening to Asheboro Undecided, filmed in downtown Asheboro at Hearts Core Art Store. We appreciate you, and we also want to encourage you to subscribe, like, share, and comment on our content. Uh, or general word of mouth can really help us out a lot. This is season one. We're almost done filming season two at this point, and we really have a lot of plans for the future seasons. So anything that you can do can help. We appreciate you. Keep listening or watching. Not only the lack of innovation and in, coupled with the stereotypes that you get, but also it's the lack of people that are supporting the small businesses. Mm. You know, it's like our downtown. I meet people all the time in this community that don't even know what's downtown. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, why aren't we? We're spending money on this 64. field way out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> but we are not spending money to educate the citizens in the community about what is downtown. And you right. know, I have that marketing brain now. Yes. And because I started this marketing company, and it's so it's like, why isn't that community sending flyers to people's doors with a list <laughs> of what is on Sunset or what it, worth the whole downtown? Why don't people have that right now for Christmas so they know what where they can spend mm -hmm. their money? Yeah, but, but I'm, case in point, how I'm hard good. would that be? But it was brought to up to put in together meetings. a flyer. Yeah. And mail it to the community. 
It was brought up in the meetings, so that it was. Well, this is this was there. <laughs> this was last Christmas. That would do wonders for our businesses. Mm-hmm. They just the businesses said that they would take the the initiative to give them to their customers. So there was like a. Well, that's little, already getting you're 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 giving yeah. it to people already walking through your exactly. door. Exactly. We need Exa- to communicate with people. Yeah, exactly. And we need to in- educate people that are yeah. in the community. Case in point, I guarantee you. <laughs> 80, at least 80% of the people that went to the, the parade and also the Christmas on Sunset didn't touch a downtown business. They just parked, saw the shit, and left. That was yeah. my problem with and, being there. And probably 50% of those businesses weren't even fucking open. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because they're not going to open because yes. they know that their community is not doing anything directly to make yeah. sure that those patrons enter their door. The other thing that really was a big sore on several business owners in the community is when we have events like that they would bitch about having to close downtown they would fight tooth and nail for them to oh you can't close down sunset you can't close down Fayetteville because they can't get to our stores but we're not going to open until two o'clock mm. Mm. well this is they're talking about like a car show that lasts from eight in the morning till ten o'clock they're right. not even going to open till two o'clock right but you sit here tooth and nail these business owners in this community sitting there fighting tooth and nail because they don't want the stuff to be closed down, which goes back to your point of the conservative values of this This is not the way things are every other day of the week. Why do I have to do it now? I can't get to my store if I want to. That's, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's the basis. Mm-hmm. I can't get there if I want to. And it has nothing to do with anybody else. Yeah. And just to see that every third or fourth Tuesday of the month or Wednesday of the month at 8 in the fucking morning... <laughs> To see these people bitch and bicker about that, mm. and to fight about the 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 parade and how it's going to get ran, and then fight about the parade up until February about how the the next parade was going to be ran in December of that year, mm. you know these things that they decide to use their energy on, and then the crosswalks that was a big thing the last year, like the crosswalks that they put the stamps of the elephant's feet and all that, mm-hmm. like that was that was a focus. A hot topic. Um, but didn't you, didn't you say the the vinyl store got kind of run out because people hated the sign or something? Yeah, the remember the the frog sticky, frog sticky sign? fingers. There's yeah. a lot of people that hated that sign. I thought it was awesome. The I remember when I first saw it. Yeah, it was only here for yeah a few months. But it's also gone. another Schwartz owned property too, so there's yeah. a, probably a couple of other things going on with mm-hmm. that shit. And it's a, that that building I thought was also. Close to being condemned. I'm mm. not sure. I don't know. But uh, well, we're if we want to. I don't know why this did. Out, why did I? Why this? Oh. <laughs> why didn't the timer go off? <laughs> as soon as I figured, got your own timer, man. Perfect. I got the timer perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, take a take a quick break. Have Shay come up here. Did you want to say anything else? Did, you didn't ask. We were running our mouths. No, it's fine. I mean, what what I would like to say for that last point y'all had is I've been living in Ashboro for a few years now. I didn't even know there was a Christmas parade. I didn't know there was any of this stuff. So mm-hmm. why is it that I live here? I have an address in Ashboro right off Sioux Parkway, and I don't know any of this. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, I just got a flyer for the new CBD store that opened up. Mm-hmm. So why can't you get a flyer for all these other mm-hmm. things, just like you said? Yeah. But, you know... I can't be the only implant to this area yeah. who has no idea what's going on, you know. Yeah. I shop around here because that's who I am as a person, you know, but a lot of people coming in, if you're close to 64, you're going to go up the road to Walmart. I mean, you're just going to, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. That would be my only point. But we can... Uh, yeah, but that's what that, that was what they were saying. They would give their own flyers to their customers. Yeah, that's dumb. What is that? Is could any part of that be that they are doing well and they are content? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, a lot of it. Because lot, lot because because what what they're gonna do is is push out new business if they continue to do that. Well, we're we're a local business and we're doing well. I mean, most of these businesses that are that way that are yeah. downtown that stayed. Yeah. Already were doing well before they even fucking opened the doors. You're right. So like them opening the doors was not a risk. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a risk. Right. You know, I'm just thinking off the top of my head at five things that people, five places that you know, even places we've talked about already. Mm-hmm. These places, there wasn't a big risk. Right. People were funding it for them. Right. To begin with. Yeah. So these places, they don't really care. 
Mm. Right. And it's not the community that's really helping them grow their business. Mm. It's because they're already established and they have a social media. Right. Yeah. These people have social media managers right on site, steady, steady mm. on there. Yeah. The ones that are successful downtown are hot on social media. Or it's not they're because hot in the church. community. Right. <laughs> really? It's not some because that are not the community, on like, yes. So I, they just tell the people at church, this mm-hmm. is where you, they, they know, and they're friends of their friends, they go to that because their or church like members go there. like a click, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's real. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it is. I mean, some place, sometimes I go into those places, but I don't go into yeah. those places because I know that's where, you know, they go because this is the demographic mm-hmm. that it is right. not social media. Right. You know, this is, so then you risk really bringing a black friend in there, you ain't going, you know, if you don't see them on social media, do not bring a, a person really? of color in there. Really? Like, really. Just think about the places that you would yeah. not see on social media. Yeah. They have maybe have a page. They might have something on mm-hmm. Google, but they're not pushing it out there. Mm-hmm. Then you might as well just not go Wow. with a person of color. Yeah. You know, it's and it's usually not the people that are there that, that run the place. It's usually the people that their demographic is, mm-hmm. which is a sad situation in it itself. Um, but yeah, you've either got the people that are word of mouth, right? Um, that my grandma used to eat here when she was a fucking teenager, mm-hmm. to the point where it's oh, well, I saw this on like Nanny Mays. It's a good point. It's a beautiful place to go. They're on social media all the time. Mm-hmm. People want to go there. They want to go there. Um, anyway, we'll switch out a little, yeah. little, little host. And- All right, one last break in this episode of Ashboro Undecided. We want to talk to you as a business owner, you as a content creator, you as a artist. If you have a business, a product, an idea that you would like to get out to our audience, please contact us. Um, this is an opportunity we're giving at the end of this season. We're giving away five slots similar to this quick 30 seconds either we're going to shot you out or figure out a way to do it once we talk to you and figure out your business your product or your art so please contact us at ashboro undecided at hotmail.com uh, sarcastic <laughs> but i'm just kidding <laughs> All right, we're back. We got Shad joining us. Uh, we did not say this is Ashboro undecided. It's a podcast for a city that does not quite know itself yet. Um, here with Kimberly, aka Kim the Candle Maker, mm-hmm. aka the baddest chick in Ashboro. Oh no, not Can I say too chick? kind. <laughs> Can I say chick? It already sounds like a. I shouldn't say that. You know? No, you got. I got to backtrack on some of this stuff, but I'm fine with chick. chick I, I I associate myself with chick. Okay. C H I K or C H I C? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotta gotta make sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're picking up. You want to start off with anything? You know, actually, I do. I because listening to your, you know, earlier conversation, uh, I, I did love that. I I've always. It's so funny when I hear Poughkeepsie, I think of one thing: IBM closing down. Because I've known several people that are from Poughkeepsie. Even my girlfriend, some of her family, um, her one of her uncles, I think, worked for IBM. Mm-hmm. And I hear the same story, you know, yeah. well, when it shut down. And I've been to Poughkeepsie. Yeah. I spent not a lot of time, but I oh, did some work cool. up there briefly yeah, and went by beautiful. the old IBM place and all that jazz. But, um, but really what hit me with that conversation was, so I moved here from Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. I had grown up there till I was 10. And I remember the same kind of shock and difference of things when I moved here. I mean, I, I still tell this to the day I'll never forget driving around the first couple of days being here in Randolph County, Asheboro specifically, and, and like, Mom, why is everybody waving at us? We don't know these people. You know, we were like, why are they? I mean, you know, I don't know this person. Why are they waving? And a 10-year-old kid, you know, you wouldn't think would ask that kind of question. But when you lived in Orlando, Florida, and we moved around a lot in that area, um, you know, you just didn't make the connections. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, to further on with it, like, it's kind of similar as well. Like, growing up, I kind of had the same, not hate, but like, Eh, Ashboro's not that great. Mm-hmm. But as I've gotten older 
and I, you know, I've moved to a couple other places and, and have made my way back here. I mean, I kind of have, I don't have kids of my own, but I definitely see why this is a good place. I mean, it, it does come with like what you were talking about, the, uh, the re, you know, the other parts, but I've also, and me and Ty have talked about this. I mean, unfortunately it's not where we all want it to be, but I mean, I've seen in the last decade, a huge change what I would consider a huge change mm-hmm. overall yeah. of this area, especially of Asheboro, um, which is nice, but we still, you know, got a long ways to go. But, um, but no, what I was kind of more curious about is you kind of covered the, the business aspect and, and, and what you, the struggles and, and stuff of you creating in this area. Have you seen, you know, I really like what you said too about, you know, growing, or blooming where you, you plant yourself and mm-hmm. um, do you have any like other inspirational or just any uh, like connections you've made with other business owners well the key to success in my business is networking and um, I network in all over the Piedmont and all over the state really um, you know if anybody wants to send me a Christmas present it'll be gas money because that is the lifeline to my business is is getting on the road going out here meeting people and I mean to to answer your question about inspirational things I think it's really important to for people that are in this community and that love this community and that want to stay and commit to this community to bring that culture here and I think that's part of, you know, kind of, you know, getting it a little bit more into that self-imposed bloomer where I implanted aspect that I'm taking here is like, I'm bringing people, I have a house guest coming here tomorrow from Raleigh to attend my networking event. And she's gonna stay over the night because it's an hour and a half drive. And, you know, she's a mortgage broker in Raleigh. And it's like, I'm, I'm just, you know, maybe I'm not making a big change or whatever. Maybe I'm just being big headed and egotistical about it. But in some way, something keeps telling me that bringing people into this community is going to help. Yes. And so I'm out here on the roads. I'm out here attending events in Raleigh. I'm out here attending events in Charlotte. Um, I'm getting ready to host another one in Guilford County. You know, um, I have connections in Winston, High Point, Greensboro, like and I am, am inviting them to the Heart of North Carolina networking event in Asheboro at Four Saints Brewing Company. And all, everybody's like, oh, I've heard of Four Saints. I need to get there and try that. You know, and I feel like, you know, maybe Four Saints has, has gotten a little beef lately, but people recognize Four Saints from outside of this community. That yeah. is what we need. Yeah. We need people to come here and we need, you know, we need people to know about it and we need like uh, new energy in here you know and yeah absolutely new new vibes whatever but (laughs) every time something new comes in here it's very fleeting Mm -hmm. and that's what's discouraging like i can't say enough good about rebecca from the downtown Mm -hmm. Asheboro incorporated she came here with that outside mentality and changed a lot for the better. I mean, she was really trying to yeah. get communities involved. And then it's fleeting, you know, it's not. It's a shame. Yeah. It's and like then, chewed up and spit out. Yeah, yeah. And it, I, I think she moved on to, you know, I don't know any background why she moved on. Probably it was better mm. of a situation. But she always got the slack from everybody. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, bringing that culture here comes with that big risk of, you know, and, who's gonna who's gonna accept it and, and keep accepting it you, I, I can't I have faced that I have faced that bull yeah and I have lost people yeah oh yeah I've lost people that I mean just to take it back we are in the homeschool community yeah. we are in the homeschool community in this area is conservative evangelical you know all of that and so it's like it's been a real challenge for me to find people that I can relate to, but yet I'm staying here because of that benefit of this is a safe community. 
so I can get in my car and I can go wherever I want to. And sometimes I'll hang out here <laughs> if there's something awesome going on, you know, if Ty or Marshall's having a show or like, you know. <laughs> but for the most part, you know, we relate more so with people away from the community. Um, the, the taxes here are really affordable. The, ha- the, the property is really affordable. So maybe I'm just like, you know, having my cake and eating it too. Yes. yes. Um, but I do wish that we wouldn't chew up innovative ideas. I wish that we as a community would be more open and more receptive to, um, you know, a broader culture. A broader spectrum. But there is huge hope for that. Yeah, there for is. Sure. There is. Yeah. It's just it's 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 it may not ever be in, in you know our professional lifetime. You know, we Maybe could be not. retired, and our kids reap the benefits of what we're what you're just saying right now. Where, you know, you're bringing the people in community. You know, to, more to balanced. See, yeah. You know, from the outside looking in, you know, as, a, as you know, I've been doing art and music since '99 you know, a business owner since around then. But to see somebody that is consistently breaking down walls and keeping the determination going like yourself is really motivating for me. Mm-hmm. Because, I, like I said, I know that there's obstacles. I, I will never know what it's like to be a woman business owner, a, a mother. I'll never know these things. But I know that, that it has a hellacious amounts of obstacles. Yeah, well, you've probably seen me flip out on social media a couple times, and I'm like, is there a single... I, this was a story that I did maybe three months ago. Is there a single entrepreneurial mom in my network? I really need to connect with someone that has a similar life as me. Nobody <laughs> showed up. Because there's not. There, there, there's not. No. And you keep doing these events and you keep going through you and you find your people. Yeah, you, you do. You find your people when you show up authentically. And yeah. that is the only time. And love is in me. That you will find your people and they are here. They are in this community. Yeah. They're behind that door. Yeah. You you're absolutely right. And I need to be reminded of this a lot of times. They're in this room now. Yes. You know, and they're, they're, we're they're, here. And there's people that represent <laughs> that you represent that represents you that are here too. You know, well, those things are encouraging to remember and, and knowing that there's there's hope and that sometimes it might not be in our professional lifetime and just to it, for me to eat that and, and understand that because it is a wonderful place for kids to grow up. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there, there's there's definitely we just need the adults to grow up now <laughs> in the community. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There we go. You know, can't say anything better than that. So let's. I'm gonna shift gears to. Uh, that was great. I'm, I, I can't. That, that's I mean, a good. Yeah. Like, yeah that's, I mean, that's, you know, you know yeah. me, Ty. I just, I'll pop off like. I mean, it's it's time for the adults yeah. to grow up. Yeah. Because you know, and I don't want you know. I know you want to segue, but like, yeah. you know, there. That's where I get hope. As far as like specifically this area, because I'm going. I moved here in '89. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was thinking about just this the other day. I was like, man, I've been here for almost 35 years, you know. And honestly just came back last week from being in Orlando, Florida on a, a trip with my girlfriend and her kids. And, you know, going around and seeing what Orlando's become from what I remember it. You know, I'm not, you know, comparing the two, but like, you know, what I was saying earlier too with Ashboro. I mean, just in the last decade, I've seen a lot more. And I'll be honest, it, it comes from the youth. A lot of it comes from the youth that are coming in this area, that are growing up in this area. I see, they're like, yeah, we're we're not about that old way, or you know, that old ideology. You know, we we're good. You know, it's just like I said, it. it and also, what you were saying, you you go out and venture out, and then you bring it back, mm-hmm. even if it's a little bit, even if it's one interaction with one of your customers or somebody. It that can be profound. You'll never know that, no. but it can be very profound and. I mean, I remember when Ty was over in China, and I was like, man, I know somebody that lives in China right now, mm-hmm. and I can't wait to hear about what it's like over there when he mm-hmm. gets back. And, and then, you know, the more as he's grown as an artist and, and involved in the community, I'm like, 
I'm glad he had that experience because I know that will permeate in his being when he interacts with other people. So they're going to get to see that uh, the thing that they haven't seen in Ashboro or Randolph yeah. County, you know, and, and honestly with, I know you said, you know, you might not see it in your professional, but I mean, there's going to be some growth in this area in the next decade that I don't think a lot of people are necessarily prepared for as far as they're, they're not expecting it. And you've got the, you know, some industrial stuff coming in. But the big thing is a lot of the people from the Raleigh area are just starting to move west yeah. because there's nowhere to go east. And like she said, it's affordable. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's a big thing. And that's a big thing, draw. And same yeah. thing from the from from the south. They're coming up from Salisbury, from yeah. Charlotte. They'd rather commute. Yeah, an hour shoot, I I commute over a half an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Excuse me. To touch base on what you said, and I'm gonna, it's, it's it's more of a negative connotation, but it breaks my heart to see the kids that are saying, "I'm not about this lifestyle. This is not what I want to be like." Then they graduate high school, they go to a out out of state university, and they never, ever, ever come back. Yeah. Maybe Christmas, and these are the people that could be the forefronts of a bigger change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're so discouraged with how things are going that they just stay away. And that's what I kind of promised myself. It would have to be a really hard definitive change in the backwards direction for us to leave or my wife would get a better opportunity to excel her career yeah those are the only two reasons that we will leave the community you know so um it's just it's heartbreaking to see that kids don't come back after they have that idea. yeah for sure yeah. and there's a lot of those um and then then they might come back home to see their parents a couple of Thanksgiving's Christmas and then mm-hmm. 10 years go by they don't come home you got to see them on Facebook you got to see them on IG and then you know the ones that do stay here a lot of them end up in jail <laughs> you know you know I'm just speaking for the yeah. inside community in, in in general because you know where they where they want to go um but uh let's segue into yeah. I was going to ask you I had a me and my wife had a really good time at your the last time we had an event with you at your newer spot I guess it was right close to when you opened and you guys had the you know the driveway off for little segments and, and things like that and we oh, did a little yeah, show the hungry out by creators the, market yeah yeah a hungry creators market that's what it was and mm-hmm. I had a really good time and uh, but I've been a part of so many things like that I know how it goes you know I know how things go and I know that you know, you never know if there's going to be a hundred people at your show or two people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember that that was just this, you, it, there was people giving you a hard time that day. Mm-hmm. And it, when me and Megan were like, how the hell can we help? And like, <laughs> we were just trying to figure out ways to just be like, like we were so mad at some of the things that people would say, like, there's nobody here and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you, Marshall, you hear that all the time at shows. Mm-hmm. You know, you put on a show and then you got five people in the crowd and like, mm-hmm. it, you, you know, you've done all the fucking work and you've put all, everything that makes a successful show with the potential of a successful show and you're like, you ungrateful motherfucker. Sometimes <laughs> they don't show. Sometimes yeah. they don't show up, the people. And, uh, you know, I don't, do? I don't want to bring that up, but I, well, I, I want to bring it up because you conquer through that and I want to... You know, I know what I do as an artist with that. Like Somewhat. I had two of those, and I'm like, hmm, I'm not going to do it anymore because the community's not supporting it. It was a trial and error kind of thing to see if it was something that would fly. Um, but the community is not ready for that. It doesn't, it doesn't want that. The community are also the people that were... Or they, maybe... The vendors in the community, like a No, mixture. the vendors, um, the second time I actually did it without charging a vendor fee. Okay. So they were there for free. Okay. Um, and they were happier, happier at that point because they were anything that they made was profit. Right. Um, because I couldn't. I couldn't charge a vendor fee for an event like that in, in Ashboro. Yeah. Um, now, if I do it downtown, I think it would definitely get more foot traffic. Um, but I wanted to utilize my property space because then I don't have to pay for the event space. 
um, and that sort of thing. Right. So what I have kind of morphed into on my property is private events. Like I have a, a candle making birthday party on Saturday there. Oh wow, that's cool. Um, so yeah, she just booked that not that long ago. So we're gonna have a birthday party, make candles. Um, so I'm kind of I'm using using that space for more smaller scale things. And that was like a trial. That was like me saying, hey, you know, is this going to be something that works? I want to have vendors. I want to have live music. I mean, I know the fire performers. Like, I know the people that do the circuses. Yeah. I can bring some really cool shit to this community. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. But it's <laughs> like, I, and I was testing that. I was testing that water, and it would have been more financially viable to do it on my property because then I don't have to rent the the Bicentennial Park. And so I was like, you know, giving that a try to see. And me, honestly, it was successful enough for me to take that next step and do it at the park. But I need a team. Right. Because that's leveling up to a point where it's just me and my assistant can can, can no longer handle that. So it's like, okay, well, let's reach out to the Hungry Creators and if we're going to do this thing... And so now where I'm kind of at with that project is, okay, well, I want this event to have a purpose. I want this event to be for something, not just entertainment and small business shopping. Um, And so that's where the Young Creators Nonprofit came from, which has been this little idea that's been stirring for a long time. And my business coach finally pulled it out of me and said, you need to do this. Like, it's time to act on this. And... Um, so I have an attorney on the board and we're, we've got the 5013C pending, 501C3 pending and, you know, making the steps in that direction. And once we get all of that set up, then I intend to bring the Hungry Creators Market to the park or maybe where, I don't know where I'm going to end up yet. I'm not going to commit to that. Right, right. That's an idea. <laughs> it's going to be somewhere. Um, and it's going to be for the cause of raising money for the nonprofit to provide hands-on creative experiences for teenagers. So all of that money is going to be going right into the teenage community, and I specifically teenagers. Um, eventually, we'll get artists, into artists, teenagers, or just teenagers in general. Um, in general, what we want to do is we want to reach just outside of the public school system and offer opportunities for them to be creative that's not offered in schools. Okay or in other programs in the community. So that's like the goal. And it's likely, I mean, we could do a brick and mortar thing, but it's likely gonna be a mobile unit at first um, or like event based, like, hey, all the teenagers in the community can come and use these materials for the day or something. So we're still working through logistics and the programming to see how this dream can actually make sense. But once that 501 gets cleared, it's gonna open up some doors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's where that project is. Is that whole event that I'm gonna do is gonna be a fundraiser. It's gonna be like a gala. I remember about a year ago, maybe a little more. You were talking about that was the next step. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. I remember that was a very good event at Four Saints, and you were telling there was several young cats that were there from some marketing firm. She brings people really for like when when I go to the events, there'll be a couple of people from Asheville, but there's a lot more um, from Charlotte. My networking events, the people that network here don't show up. <laughs> yeah, and, I literally uh, will have like five counties represented and two people from Asheboro. Yeah, uh, but that's okay. It, it, I it mean, is, it's it fine. Is. People now, like to meet in the middle here. Yeah. 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 Now let's 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 dive into so what's the feedback from these these individuals that come from different counties and different c- cities. They want to help me grow the event. They not want to the, see not it the bigger. Event, but what about oh. Asheboro? What oh. is their feedback? I, 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 they have to have incredible feedback for them to keep on coming back because mm-hmm. I see the same faces. Mm-hmm. So I kind of know the answer to that. But mm-hmm. what do they give you with the vibe of Asheboro? Do they just come in and then are they gone? Do they feel welcome? They have a lot of questions. No, they feel welcome. Okay. Yeah, they feel welcome here. Four Saints does a great job with that. Yes. I've always had it there. Um, I went to Lumina twice and had it there. Um, Lumina, I didn't get a lot of positive. Uh, people kind of felt, um, I don't know. It was it was good there. I mean, it was just small, I think. I don't know. Four Saints is a much better vibe for that, for that particular event. Right. And um, 
people have a lot of questions about it. They'll talk to me and they'll ask me questions about the businesses there. And um, Of course, most of the time, is there even a place for them to go prior to or before or after? Like to even just hang out and extend the no, night? No, there's, there's not really a place for them to... I think that people at my event would spend the night here if things were happening. Yeah. Like if like you like if they could go somewhere after kind of thing and i wish that there were more food options as well for them right. um you it's kind both. of hard <laughs> to yeah it's kind of hard for them to or for us to eat something um you're not, you know if you're not going down for a sit down is to have like a good quick meal that's not fast bad food. for you or fast food <laughs> yeah yeah and there's not a lot of vegetarian options here. A lot yeah. of people that come are vegetarian. Right. So. The, um, I was just telling him that the Bun Hut's not closed. Oh, really? Yeah. They're looking for a new, new owner, I think, but they're, they're closed. Oh, wow. Which is another, you know, part yeah, of the this, culture. That is, that is one thing, you know, not to go off on that tangent, but this, this area has a hard time keeping non-fast food stuff. Yeah. That's, that's, that's I mean, so we were just talking earlier, the, you know, the sandwich place you were yeah. part of and the other place I mentioned right there at the corner of Worth, or adjacent to Worth, I mean, up until it was the hot dog, uh, Mike's hot dogs, I mean, it, it was like every six months it was something else. Yeah. And I'm like, can nothing stick? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's a, that's, that's another Schwartz property too, isn't it? It's the foot traffic. It's the people are not <laughs> yeah. supporting the downtown. And I say that from experience. Yeah, I'm not yeah. making a judgment. I'm not casting yeah, yeah. a call. No. I'm saying that from experience. Yeah. People don't support the downtown in this community, and that's why they're in and out, and that's why it's it's a hard time for them to make it. Yeah. That there's Some a, of them. That also... The ones that are in and out. You're right. They also... You know, I love what we've got downtown, but you, how many coffee spots do we need? Yeah. yeah. Um, and how many, it's, it's, you know, it gets to the point where it's a carbon cop. The, the culture is a copy of another culture. Yeah, who's yeah. regulating that? Who's who's making sure that we have variety? Nobody, nobody, no, nobody. Mm -hmm. they who's ever willing to pay rent right yeah, now? Yeah, so I mean, just being mm -hmm. a part of the Chamber of Commerce, I see that they're, they, they have no say-so in anything. Mm. There's nothing. There, there, there's nothing that they do. They sit there with their, their board meetings for an hour, and then it's done. You know, mm -hmm. nobody's saying how can we better the community. It's how how can we make sure that we can stay afloat for next year. Right. I mean, there's no innovation there. It's 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 it's, it's discouraging to see. Yeah. Um, and I see that, and I'm like, you know, um, if you think about it again, you know, you you think about people of uh, minorities of color. Where would they want to go downtown? Minorities of color. Minorities of people of color, I mean. Mm. Yeah, that's all right. We understand what you meant. Yeah, it's like Michael said. He said, <laughs> fast forward, and I've got Where my, would they want three to kids. Go? My wife has three kids. Or what? I, mean, I, can't <laughs> I guess but they just, would support Magnolia 23. Yeah, I mean, there's not, like, there's, there's not a welcoming vibe to downtown for anybody that doesn't fit the Black Lantern. That doesn't fit the Nanny Mays. That doesn't fit the kind of clicky, pig, I guess. Is a good that doesn't way to put fit hops. Clicky barbecue. Mm -hmm. That doesn't fit. I've been experiencing yeah. that my entire life. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that. That there's a deep rooted history in people that from the east side they don't feel safe downtown. People from downtown don't feel safe on the east side. I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. the that's the way things are here in this this city. And there's a deep rooted. So why do we continually make it? A bigger gap for anybody to feel more welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. you know I mean does that speak to an urban community at all anything in downtown mm -mm. does it speak to a teenage group maybe the bakeries and stuff like that because they're on hit TikTok no, and things. my son doesn't want to do anything down so, there. yeah so I mean just the, the, and that is I do not think it's intentional no, no. Well, it's um, not. It's because there's nobody regulating that. There's no yeah. planning going on. These planning people, I don't know what they're getting paid for. Because they're not planning. They're not. No. They're not coordinating. Yeah. 
They're planning the, the <laughs> concerts. Is what Somebody planning. needs to be, okay, maybe I'm going to go apply for that job. You, you should. Should I? You should. I should go apply you should. for that job. Like, so I've applied for, I've applied for <laughs> that job. What can I do? <laughs> I've applied for that job. They don't want me. I'm not going to get it after you release se- this. <laughs> se- several jobs that look like that. I don't want fucking nothing to do with it. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I don't want to, excuse me, I don't want to be a downer and, 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 and discouraging, but I just want to open the eyes up because I'm still here, like you said. I'm one of these people that I'm, you know, hypocritically I saying, get. here, I am, I hate Asheboro, I love Asheboro. Um, I am Asheboro, you know, get, get it together, Ty, get it together. You know, yeah, you're yeah. here, you're well, here. Well, that's what I'm feeling, and, like, I know, I feel what you're talking about, like, I really do. But are these young people ever going to see positive from this community if we don't make it that way? And how? I don't know. Yeah. I don't have an answer for how. I just do do what yeah. I do. But I see what you're saying about the segregation that's still, like, very real, very alive. Yeah. I mean, I can get into Native American culture and history that, that is assimilated and repressed and, yeah. you know... <laughs> but it's, we, <laughs> it's 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 tough. It's it's so tough. It but really is. Th- so you were here, and when you were eight years old, I remember the damnedest things that these kids would tell me in, in kindergarten. Well, I'm a sixteenth Cherokee. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Well, they say that because they want they get they're getting paid from the reservation. <laughs> because when you're up to 16th, I'm all into Native American culture. Like okay. I study it religiously. I need to have a big conversation. Yeah, that's right? a whole yeah. podcast right there. Yeah. I'm actually writing. I'm writing a series. Of, this is just for fun. Okay. I'm I writing a, I'm you. writing a series of blog articles about what I've learned and about this cult, about this natives in this community. Okay, I would like to know that. Apparently Cherokee, definitely. Um, well, Kiwahi, which Kiwahi. when you read it, it's it's read Kiwahi, but it's actually spelled, you know, it was actually pronounced on the native tongue as Caraway. And that's huh. where Caraway Mountain was named. Yeah, you know we know that. that. So, I lived here my whole, almost my whole life and never knew that. Yeah. yeah we need and to if you go to the top of Caraway Mountain, it's actually a private property, so yeah. I don't know if I should be talking about this on a public thing, but we'll just, we'll, we'll there's a rock again. wall up there, a okay. long stone rock wall that you can tell that I learned about it from a man in Franklinville. A man in Franklinville will talk about it. He used to go out there back in the day and play bluegrass. And <laughs> they used to go out there on the mountain and play bluegrass. He taught me. He told me about this mountain, and so we went up there. And um, this rock wall, I mean, you can tell as old as is 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 old. Is really really old. And I mean, I guess you never really know, but you can see how there's three mountains. There's the Caraway Mountain. There's um, Mount Shepherd, and then there's Dave's Mountain. The three mountains like when you're up there you can look down into the valley and you can see that that wall was an area for protection like that I really feel now this is just my empathy but I really feel like that wall was built for a war zone for protection like to protect that valley back in the day you got that vibe you know what I mean but but anyway, there's there's a lot of you know factual and archaeological history as well. But I get all into that. That's and, awesome. And the people in this community are not listening to their own culture. True. Yeah. They're not True. listening to what grandma is teaching them because they're drinking themselves silly. Or grandma's not teaching the right thing. That's well, grandma probably one. keeping it secret yeah. because she's assimilated. We had no idea what the Civil War was so about. So the cultures are just slipping away. They're just going through the cracks, and it's just, like, so sad. So I understand what you say. Like, I understand why you're upset. I know what what you're feeling about how there's so much being pushed away, you know? But it's like... It's a phase. We're... We're let's just be real about it. We're privileged, okay. You, myself, probably everybody in this room, we're privileged, mm-hmm. and we can help. We if it's if it's not going to be us that's going to do something, who the fuck's right. going to do it? 
Yeah. I've, I've stayed true to that. This statement. is what yeah. you, you're doing here. And yeah. like, this is why I'm here to support you. And this is why you come and support me because we got to stick together on this. Yeah. Yeah. You know? 100%. And I'm going to stay optimistic about this community. And that's why I need to talk to you more. And I'm yeah. going to be moving. Yeah. Moving stuff in this community. Why? I don't know. Because you can't. Why? I don't know. <laughs> why am I having this yeah. self imposed commitment to this? I don't understand. Is it affecting my life in a negative way? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because of my children's social life. Right. <laughs> See, that's a whole nother, like, so, I, I'm not, you got a 15 year old. I don't know. That's a whole nother thing I got to prep for because I know that's, that's, it's coming. that's on the cloud. <laughs> that's, that, 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 that's on the cloud that's slowly coming down. It can, it can either storm on us or just shield us from the light. I don't know yet, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm at a point where, I mean, it's all a phase and it's all a cycle and it's all a season. You know, that's what I think. And I know I've been on the other side and I'll, I'll get on the other side. But right now it's just a very big ball of emotions. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I'm, th this is really why I wanted to talk with you. And I'm glad I thank you for coming down. I would, I want to talk more about your, um, your Native American uh, findings. You know, I always wanted to dive into it. Have you talked to Matt Watley much about this at all, the, the historian? Um, I used to run with Matt Watley. I, I, just, I used to run, Braden's father um, was really, was close to, and knows Matt Watley personally. Okay. So I don't personally, but we have, he has allowed for me and my ex-husband on some of his properties okay. to help clean up and excavate some of the things that... Nice. We're there. Yeah, I have some some uh, some cool stuff I could share with you. So we uh, we are planning at some point in 2023 to go to the Randolph room and sit down with him with the cameras and talk to him. Oh, that would if be would, amazing. If he has like so a, much. If you would like, like to just ask information, be, be a host and ask him questions that you need for your research, that would be cool. <sighs> Oh my God, that would be so yeah, amazing! Yeah, we'll set it up. I bet he knows so much yeah. Native history here. He does here in, in Ramsour. He he's really knows a lot more Ramsour, but mm -hmm. of course he's he knows everything around here. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna set up at least. We'll go down there. We're gonna take our equipment there, sit with him, talk with him, mm -hmm. and if the topic of that conversation needs to be about Native Americans, I would love it. It would be beneficial yeah. to you, beneficial to. It's us definitely one thing that was never, like, really talked about. Yeah in school and stuff was uh yeah they talk about a lot of the other history around this area but not not that yeah, yeah. it's getting sad i remember like the yeah very sad and i remember like the biggest thing i remember was when they were putting in the bypass down at 220 and people were going out there trying to look for you know um arrowheads and stuff like that that's right. about the extent of it what it became yeah mm -hmm. so we i mean we need to like i lived in franklinville for a while and i had no clue about ramsour being very heavily, in, you know, indoctrinated, or not indoctrinated, mm -hmm. but like historically from the Native American side. Yeah. I mean, that's the same way, like I was briefly mentioned, the Civil War and how our states in Randolph County was against the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. It always was. I never knew this until two years ago. Mm -hmm. So what are we being raised against? Yeah, you know? that's But... Yeah, we got our next guest coming in. All right. Come on in, y'all. We were just Hi. wrapping up. Hi. Hi. How are you? It's good. How are y'all? Get up so you get by. It's still tight. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Uh, yeah, I'd love to be a fly on the wall for that conversation. No, you be, a, and you, you be in, uh, you know, in on with it. Yeah. Well, maybe I could request, you know, uh, we'll split it up a presence minutes. with him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, a Native American you'll, you'll be part thing. Of the, you'll be part of the Ashburn Sighted crew at that point. And it'll probably be February. You know, you got time to think about what you want to talk to them about. But, I'll have so um, many questions. But, but, yeah. I'm very interested in that because, like, I have, like he said, we, we're not, we don't learn anything about Native American history in our community ever. Right. So to dig into that and to get further into it, even just what you said about Caraway was enlightening to yeah. me. Like in him and probably everybody in the room. Yeah, I get really dorky on that stuff. I read John Lawson's dorky. manuscripts, like yeah. the explorer that explored this area. Yeah, his manuscripts are online. You can read them. That's but that's yeah, awesome. I've like read all. Yeah, that stuff. we we need we needed that. <laughs> yeah, we we, we, we 
We needed Kim, Kimberly the candle maker. <laughs> <laughs> and that still's going. It ain't even, it ain't even missed a beat. Yeah, earlier. well, I'll keep talking, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? But we, we have some beautiful guests coming up yeah. next. So. Yeah. Anything else you want to say before you sign off? On I here? mean, just thank you. Thank you guys for pulling this together, for, you know, letting my voice be heard, for engaging in this style of conversation um it's very much needed breaking yeah. down the walls in some way thank you yeah you're very welcome you know thank you keep on pushing and keep on you know i think by the time we cycle back around i might be more optimistic and you might be mm -hmm. on the side that i'm at now and yeah we can well help i'm here around. i'm here in the community and i'm here for anyone in the community i am this community and you know um, I'm just going to keep showing up authentically and knowing that, that my people are out there and that the people that are not going to be there for me. Yeah. That's perfect. That's a good one. <laughs> perfect. So, I, think, I think you reached our next guest pretty good. <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> I think you spoke to them. <laughs> there and are really great people in Asheville. <laughs> I promise well, I mean, you. It, it's, it's what I do. It's part of my company now, and I'm helping others do this. I'm helping others with the marketing company, with uh, createsincerely.com. Um, you can contact me there because that's what I'm helping people show up authentically because it is, it is a hard thing for business owners sometimes to be able to communicate, you know, especially uh, the creative entrepreneurs, handmade businesses. In a talk like this instead of in a meeting where yeah. you can't even squeak in. yeah. <laughs> well, even, you know, when you, when you start talking about, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that there's a connotation that even goes with networking, I feel, you know, yeah. and, and mm. that's where I feel more people like you that can bring it down and mm. make it not feel so yeah. boxy. And, I promote my event. I like, mean, this is networking that's fun. Yeah, exactly. Come with a mindset to serve. Yeah. So we got to go to the to an event. Is it still yeah, it's Wednesdays? tomorrow. tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Yep, yeah. second Wednesdays every month. I'll be month. taking my mom to... Raleigh tomorrow, but no I know it's short notice. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be eight. upset if you can't come tomorrow. Well, but. I started following your social media stuff, so I'll definitely keep up with it. Yeah, I'll invite you. Uh, six to eight. Six to eight. Because mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I could use some mm -hmm. some uh, I'm, I networking might be in skills. South Carolina more, but if you not, be. if not, then yeah. Yeah, and it's every second Wednesday, so if nothing else, just share it. Yeah. yeah. I want yeah. people to know that we're networking, and that it's it's relaxed. It's it's really about building relationships. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to sell to people. It's just, you know, meeting people and seeing if something pops off. Right. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All Keep right. reaching thank out you. and bringing back. <laughs> I like thank that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, let's do something.